Honestly, I can't believe I haven't done a video on this yet. I quite frankly thought I had, but when I went back and looked through my catalog, I don't see a video on this, so forgive me if this is redundant, but today in this video, I want to talk with you about if there's a role and a purpose for recreational experiences in the context of, let's say, psychedelic therapy in general, and what that role might be. Uh, I might surprise you with my uh, my advice on this. So if that interests you, if you're curious about how does recreational use fit in a therapeutic context, let's talk about it. And just really quick before we go ahead and get into the main content here, uh, first of all, hello, my name is Dave. I'm a coach, I'm a hypnotherapist. Yes, I work with people in the psychedelic space, supporting them around their transformation and healing process. Um, if you like this kind of content, you know, please do the usual, you know, thumbs up, you know, to let the algorithm know. Uh, if you really like this kind of content, if you're on the psychedelic path and you find this information valuable and you find me tolerable, please do consider subscribing to the channel, you know, click the bell icon, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and without further ado, let's talk about the role of recreational use in psychedelic therapy. So for the first time in my life, we're kind of in a funny place, a funny situation when it comes to psychedelics and new people getting into psychedelics. Um, pretty much for most of my adult life, I've been taking psychedelics pretty much my entire adult life, which started in the early 90s to give you context. So that's over 30 years. That entire time, almost all the people that I know that got involved in psychedelics did so at least to some degree with an interest in, let's say, recreational use or spiritual use, uh, you know, ritualistic use, but usually it was about self-exploration, spirituality, fun, uh, amusement, play, creativity, this kind of a thing. Um, now what we're seeing for the first time is this huge influx of people into the psychedelic space that are coming strictly for therapeutic purposes, right? These are people who, and you're, you may be one of them yourself, who really need support around healing, have heard the rave reviews about psychedelic therapy and psychedelics and the possibilities therein, and they want a piece of it understandably, right? Now, what, what comes with this is a very different mindset that people are coming to psychedelics with, a different set of expectations, a different set of projections that they're projecting on what psychedelics are and how to use them, right? And so we end up with a lot of folks who are very serious now about how to use psychedelics. And it's all about intentional use. It's all about therapeutic use in the right way and all this kind of thing. I chuckled to myself about that because there was a time when I was really very kind of zealous about you know, using psychedelics in quote unquote the right way. Uh, and I was very serious about that uh, and kind of heavy handed on some of my friends that were perhaps more on the recreational side of the spectrum, right? And so I chuckle to myself now because I'm in a much more open-ended, open-minded, broad spectrum kind of way of relating to psychedelics. And, and I see these new people coming in who are perhaps a little serious about it because that's what they've been kind of, you know, told or implied how they should relate to this. And what ends up happening is that a lot of these people, you know, they're suffering. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of fear. They're really serious about the medicine. They don't, they're, they don't think of themselves as drug users necessarily. They don't want to abuse these. And then they go and they take the medicine and they have really difficult experiences. And I'm seeing like overall a massive rise in the amount of difficult experiences off the bat for people. I think this is for a lot of different reasons. I could probably do a whole video on the different reasons why, but you know, this I think this has everything to do from a range of the effects of the internet and kind of increase in neuroticism and economic pressure and stress about the state of the world and the future to things like, um, you know, the impact of medication on our culture and our society. Uh, as well as just the framing of psychedelics as therapy. So people are coming with this therapeutic mindset and they take the medicine and, um, and they're thinking about their issues. So lo and behold, what comes up but their issues, right? So the reason I'm bringing all this up just to kind of frame what we're talking about here is, you know, a lot of times I talk to these people and and I'm like, well, you know, have you ever done them recreationally, you know, or, or, or we talk, it somehow comes up in conversation and generally it's no, I've never done them recreationally, or I don't know if I'm okay with doing them recreationally, this kind of a thing, right? Now I want to kind of 
offer you an idea here, which is why psychedelics use used recreationally is valuable and important in and of it themselves. You know, I could probably do like a listicle with like five bullet points as to why, but I'm kind of just doing this off the cuff here. So let me just kind of make my point. If you're new to psychedelics, um, not only and, and you're trying to use them for therapy, right? In the context of psychedelic therapy, not only are you suddenly um, you know, trying to address whatever the therapeutic thing is, which is challenging enough and overwhelming and stressful and often a learning curve in and of itself to understand perhaps a therapeutic view on what might be happening for you, right? But on top of that, you're also dealing with the learning curve of these incredibly bizarre, confusing, strange, new kind of drug experiences and, and the complexity of that, right? Psychedelics in and of themselves impact you in a variety of ways and deliver you a lot of new insights and new experiences in your nervous system outside of processing whatever your issues are. Just getting used to that feeling in the body or the different sets of feelings in the body, the different way of thinking, the kind of place in yourself it evokes, whether it's a fearful place or childlike place or a, you know, a free-spirited place or an open-minded place or a serious place. You know, just coming to terms with what they evoke for you is a whole massive learning curve, right? Then there's how do I um, walk on them, you know, talk on them? How do I relate to others on them? How do I feel comfortable in the presence of another person on them, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, there's a whole learning curve to just being on the medicine that if you're piling that on top of a learning curve of therapy and healing, is a lot for probably anyone, okay? Let's be fair. And so this is one of the major reasons why I think recreational experiences are good. I think another rec reason recreational experiences are good is that you, if you can take them in a non-therapeutic situation where you have permission to have fun, where you have permission to laugh or permission to listen to music or dance or draw or do yoga or take a walk in nature or have a chat with a good friend or uh, what have you. You have permission to enjoy the state you're in, then it builds trust with the medicine. Right? Because one of the big issues you find with uh, people new to psychedelic therapy who are you know, just taking them just for therapy is that there's a lot of fear uh, about the medicine itself. A lot of fear about, is this going to make me crazy? Am I going to have a psychotic episode from this? Um, is it going to provoke a bad trip and some deep set of terrors that I'm not ready to process? Um, you know, what are these body sensations? I mean, I feel like I have electricity running through me and that's a little weird and uncomfortable. How do I deal with that? You know, how do I deal with these moments of confusion and kind of fuzzy brainness that happens or these moments of, you know, absolute irrational laughter where I'm like laughing to tears for no reason, these kinds of things, right? These are all very, very common experiences on psychedelics, but it, you know, trying to grapple with that and grapple with therapy, you know, it, it's just, it's it's a lot. And so you want to build a, a trusting relationship with the medicine itself and trusting relationship with your own body on the medicine so that you kind of have a sense of, I know what this is. I know how this works. You know, I know how to relate to it. I know how to relate to life through this experience in a way that, it's comfortable enough. You know, I mean, that's always a learning curve. There, there are certain things, certainly things people probably obviously shouldn't be doing on psychedelics. So I'm not encouraging and saying, you know, go do whatever. But you want to get used to the medicine. You want to build a, a safe, trusting relationship with the medicine, with yourself that isn't about therapy so that you're not overlaying fear about the therapy, fear about, you know, anxiety about you know coming to terms with whatever heavy thing you have to come to terms with and then layering fear about is this medicine going to make me crazy or give me a bad trip and all of that being really a, a, a lot that's stacked against you right uh, the other thing the other big reason i would say that we want to consider recreational experiences as valid inside of psychedelic therapy is that 
they can deliver you resource states, right? Like uh, I, I saw a recent meme um, of something called a glimmer. So glimmers are in, you know, according to this meme, the opposite of a trigger, right? So a glimmer is when you have a moment where life appears beautiful, feels safe, you have a moment of well-being or clarity or inspiration or a positive emotion kind of moves through you and you feel wonderful, right? So it's the opposite of a trigger. Um, Psychedelics deliver glimmers. Psychedelics deliver resource states, moments of aha, or moments of um, playfulness, or moments of um, feeling connected to all of life, or moments of really enjoying things. Like maybe you listen to your favorite band and it's like a whole new thing in the best way, right? It's like you, you get your band on a whole other level and you love it on a whole other level. or Again, you end up having conversations about things you've never talked about with people before in a good way, like where you end up having a deep heart to heart with a friend about, you know, what is existence, right? What does it mean to be alive, right? And that's the kind of thing maybe you've never had a chat with someone about before, but that's a really life affirming experience to have, right? So taking psychedelics in a recreational context creates all of these openings for these kinds of experiences that I think in general are life affirming and you know well-being affirming. And I think that also maps over and translates to better therapeutic work where you've got you know more of a sense of connection to well-being, to safety, to happiness, to joy, to laughter, to you know levity, to silliness, to uh, all these other things that help you to deal with the heaviness and the pain and the, and the hard corners easier, right? And so this is another reason why I'd say that, yeah, it's really valid to use psychedelic recreationally as part of your support, as part of a larger system for psychedelic therapy. Um, I think there's one other thing to say here, which I haven't talked about in a while. I probably should bring it up on the channel more, which is that sometimes the line between therapy and recreation blur, right? So, um, like I was just saying, with these kind of resource state experiences, these positive moments, sometimes you're taking psychedelics in a uh, recreational setting. Let's say you go to a concert and you go to see a band and you're with a bunch of your friends and everyone took mushrooms or something like that, right? And in those moments, you may have these moments of joy, of gratitude for life that feel profound and therapeutic, right? And give you a renewal of your sense of self or your sense of the beauty of what's possible in the world, right? Conversely, sometimes in a therapeutic context, you know, and this is true even without psychedelics, but I think it becomes more true with psychedelics. Um, some of the breakthroughs are, you know, a little recreational. Like there, there are moments of play in therapy that are part of the therapeutic process that are fun or interesting or profound or deep or magical that uh, feel a little recreational, feel a little not strictly therapeutic, but you know, but are appropriate inside of the therapeutic container in that moment, right? And so these are these hard lines, these hard boundaries aren't always really there in the way that we like to think of it in like a clean, neat way, right? And so I think in general, you wanna just get literate with psychedelics if you're gonna be working with them as a tool for healing. You wanna get literate in these states and how they impact you and affect you, where they tend to take you, how to navigate different states, how to, you know, how they reorient your sense of self, reorient your sense of life and the world and the cosmos around you. I think all of that is deeply valuable and all of that can be folded back into the thera therapeutic work in a really important way. So uh, that's my point here about psychedelics and, you know, recreational use and, and how that all fits into therapy. I think they're incredibly useful tools and, and I don't think it's really fair to dismiss recreational experiences is not valid towards your overall sense of healing, well-being, expansion, and, and redefinition of yourself. I, th I think it all counts. You know, In the same way that I think traveling to another country 
can count or you know taking a new workshop you know going in yeah you know, like say you finally take up yoga for the first time in your life and you've never done yoga before and all of a sudden you're feeling better in your body and you feel more relaxed and more comfortable and more safe i think that's a valid thing you know in the same way that taking up meditation is a valid support piece right is, is meditation just recreational is it just for entertainment and learning and self-exploration not necessarily it becomes an incredibly useful tool in the therapeutic container. So uh, we've got to be clear that sometimes these experiences and tools we have outside of therapy really do apply inside of therapy too. So anyways, I'm going to quit yammering on for now. Hopefully I've made my case with you. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, leave a comment down below. Leave a thumbs up if you like this video uh, and let me know and I'm happy to talk about it more if you have any questions about it. All right. Much love to you guys. Take care. Thank you for watching as always. I truly appreciate you uh, and I wish you all the best and I will see you guys in the near, near future.